Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us here on O State TV. I'm Taylor Hernandez, and with us tonight we have Diane Guerrero. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. So, in addition to your role as Marita Ramos on Orange is the New Black, you also play Lena in Jane the Virgin. So, which one of those characters is it kind of easier for you to get in the mindset of? Um, I mean, it's not about easy, I guess. Um, I guess, I guess Marita Ramos is a little tough um, because it's sort of, I mean, you're you're in prison, you have to, you know, you're obviously going through a traumatic experience. So I think maybe, I guess Lena is a little easier to get into. She's a little more fun and um, is sort of allowed to be who she is. Whereas in prison, you, you know, you're kind of trying to be yourself in a space that requires you not to be uh, too individualistic, so. Yeah, and then I feel like we all kind of have that Lena and Jane relationship in our life. We all have our Jane, we all have our Lena, you know? Sure, yeah. sure, yeah, we have, uh, it's, uh, what are the, uh, we're best friend goals. No, we're, we get along, uh, Lena and, and Jane are, are good for each other. They're super, op like, different people, but um, I think fundamentally um, their values are the same and they're based in, uh, in love and, um, and friendship. Mm-hmm. So, in addition to those roles, something that a lot of, of the fans of these smash hit TV shows that you're in, something that they're not as aware of is that your parents were actually deported when you were 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. So, take me back to that time. Like, walk me through that day. I know you say that you walked into an empty house. Yeah, I'm um, like, like, I mean, <laughs> like most people who've, who've been separated from their families uh, in this way. Now, I, I think every, every case is unique. Um, yeah, I happened to, I was in school, I mean, this is sort of a reality that I knew was part of my life, and my parents knew that very well, and, um, you know, we were very cautious and careful, but it was a conversation that we had at home, so, yeah, when I was 14, I was in, it was my freshman year of high school, and, um, I, you know, I go home, and my parents were gone, they had been arrested by ICE and, and taken into custody, and, uh, there they had to await uh, to be deported to their homeland of Colombia. And so I experienced that all at a very young age of 14. Yeah. And you spoke in your book and you kind of went through how difficult it was for you to write a memoir and go through this process so publicly. So what kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back that kind of pushed you to being so open? Um, well, for a long time I was, I mean, I was very traumatized by this whole experience. I was going through a lot of mental health issues. Um, I wasn't very happy, even though I was, I've always been sort of an optimistic, kind of a go-getter uh, kind of girl. And this was uh, in the midst of me kind of accomplishing um, some really cool things that happened in my life. Like, first of all, going to college was a huge accomplishment. Never thought that I would be able to do that since I didn't have my parents, I didn't really have the support. And then to go on and, per, you know, pursue higher education and then go on to actually you know, try different things that had interests me, like like the arts, and actually um, actually gain employment in it and 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 find some success. Um, it was sort of becoming harder and harder to do that, um, and holding who I who I was at the time, so or, or who I am, yeah. and so living um, with that secret kind of became harder, and so. I, there were a lot of things that that sort of broke the camel's back. It was it was that it was I was seeing uh, dreamers and um, a lot of brave young people starting movements and going out there and being honest about who they were and 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 speaking their minds and um, and sharing their opinions of of what was going on with with this country and immigration as a whole and, and the immigration system here and how it was failing um, a lot of people and just and, and really the country. And so I felt like I also had an important story to share and I felt like I had this platform that I was misusing in a way. Um, and you know and then and so I decided to, to share. I, I decided to share it in an op-ed for the LA Times. Uh, just a simple story, a one-page story about this is who I am and um, I, I'm I'm going through this, and I want to share it because there are a lot of people right now in danger of being separated from their families, and I have I also have this experience. 
Did you fear the backlash from using your platform for such a hot button topic? And I mean, especially now in the society that we live in, it's such a hot button issue. Were you scared of kind of the backlash you might get? Yeah, I was. Um, I was scared, but I was also more scared of being silent and and uh, what, what could happen if I wasn't honest with myself and others. Um, because I always had this burning desire to really contribute to my community in, in any way that I could. And I really wanted to be that person who was a change maker. And I felt like if I didn't, if I didn't, if I didn't participate with all of these other people who are risking their their status or risking their lives um, for what they believed in, um, then I would have felt like maybe I lived with no purpose. And so I was really on that kick of living my life with purpose and finding something that um, was true to me and that that made me feel like uh, like maybe what my parents had gone through. Um, was for not, right? Um, I wanted to make a difference in any way that yeah, I Yeah, kind of find a reason for all that pain, a purpose through all that pain to help sure, others. Sure, sure, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So in the book you talk about how often your father would discuss the possibility of their deportation with you, so how vital do you think that was in preparing you to take this on at such a young age? Well, I mean, I guess it was really important because it wasn't like it hit me um, out of nowhere, I, so I was prepared, I knew what to do, I had a goal in mind, I wanted to succeed in any way that I could, um, so it helped me a lot. Um, it made it for an interesting childhood, for sure. Um, I grew up with a lot of anxiety, um, I talk about that in the book, um, how living in this situation in a mixed status family um, or in an undocumented family just raises a bunch of um, anxiety and insecurity and mental health issues um, that sort of either come out then or later like like it did with me. I mean there there was that part of it but it also prepared me to be a strong individual and and to know that my life didn't end there and that I had to do my best to be good to myself and love myself and whether that was through education, uh, through following my dreams, if I wanted to try a class or if I wanted to join a group um, whether it was a dance group or a, a singing group or anything that uh, uh, that was offered in, in school or in like the local YMCA, um, I was trying to to give that to myself, and that was through the spirit of my father telling me not to give up and to believe in myself, and that that what our what our life had been or our experiences that we had had that they didn't define me, and I I had the opportunity to really shape my life from here on out. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like those words really rang in your ears sure. and kind of kept you going all these years without him having him here. But so something else that I think is really interesting is that in your book, you also talk about how hard your parents tried for years and years mm -hmm. to obtain citizenship. So what do you think are some of the largest misconceptions when it comes to undocumented immigrants? Um, well, that that they're here to take jobs. Uh, take people's jobs that they want to commit crime or um, that they that they don't want to that they don't want to assimilate that they don't want to become citizens um, and participate civically in this country. I think one of my parents' biggest dreams and what I saw in our community was that we were so desperately trying to uh, assimilate and and to uh, do things the right way. Um, Whatever that means. Whatever right? that, yeah. whatever getting in line or whatever doing it the right way is. All I know is that we have, we shared, we share many of the same values as Americans do. Um, that is uh, uh, unity of the family, uh, respect, love, and, um, and hard work. And that's all I was taught as a kid, and, and that's what I aspire to do every day. Um, but yeah, I, I think that the book also gives me a chance to talk about uh, how broken the immigration system is and how it's really outdated and how the visa system is outdated and needs updating. And obviously right now the conversation has shifted greatly from trying to repair the system to really, uh, I don't know, uh, fear-mongering and division. Uh, <laughs> 
and also uh, using immigrants as a scapegoat, as we saw in yesterday's uh, State of the Union. I mean, it wasn't surprising to me to hear such negative uh, talk towards the immigrant community because that's really how Trump's uh, and this administration, uh, how, how their campaign started was, was through uh, negative rhetoric towards a community that is already so marginalized. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, I mean, that, that's another reason why I wrote the book is because I'm trying to share real experiences from, you know, I could be your next door neighbor, or I, you know, I could be your, your grocer, whatever it is, I'm a human being. And, uh, and, and I have a story too. And, and I think if we all share our experiences and hear each other out, then possibly we can come to an understanding of who an immigrant is and uh, and maybe let go of some of those misconceptions and, and those fears. So talking about that, how do you rise above those negative stereotypes and how do you push forward reforming the immigration process? Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the things that need to happen in order to kind of repair the system? Well right now, I mean, I think, and, and believe me, I've been <laughs> going back and forth to seeing what my role really is um, in, in all of this. I can't say, well, I'm going to save, the, you know, I'm going to save the conversation. It's just, I'm just part of the conversation. I'm not a politician. I don't, I don't pretend to know what the answer is. Um, but right now, I think that what's helped me really understand what my role is here and to help me not pay attention to sort of the backlash that I'm getting from having this opinion or from being a brown woman in, in America is to know my history. And this is what I'm encouraging, you know, a lot of kids when I, uh, to a lot of kids when I go to these schools and I give talks and um, any, any of my art, any of my interviews or any of the articles that I write is that to know our history because a lot of what's happening right now and a lot of this, um, I guess division comes from not understanding one another and our history and where we've come from and why why this country is what it is and why it represents so much for all of us. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm encouraging that right now. Right now I'm also trying. I, I guess going back to telling you what I've discovered about what my role is. I'm I'm just here as a representation of this community that is often left in the shadows. Mm -hmm. um, I am an American. I love this country. I want to participate. I, I want to let people know that our community is beautiful and that it is uh, just as much a part of this country as anyone else, as, as any other. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing your journey and using your platform for definitely a conversation worth having and putting a face to this and letting us know that it is our neighbors and our grocers, as you were saying, that are going through these things. Thank you. Great questions. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. All right, that's all we have here on O-State TV. I'm Taylor Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.